I'm working on this video talking about how prostitution is advertised in Germany. So what legal prostitution advertising looks like and the list of legal services that are advertised. Now this is from this year. So I'm looking at what's being advertised right now. Because for example, they outlawed the outright advertisement of pregnancy, mothers and child rights reasons. That doesn't mean that women in an advanced stage of pregnancy aren't still in the industry and that there's a huge lack of support for them, etc. But at least the advertisement is no longer legal and normalized the way it used to be. The stuff that is still legal is still pretty shocking to the point that I've been doing this for years and I still get disturbed sometimes. And I just keep circling back to this comparison that someone else started. I don't know who or I'd credit them. But someone said or wrote, they don't understand why people condemn projects such as bum fights, but they have no issue with prostitution and porn. So for those who don't know, Bum Fights was a video series that ran for several years exploiting homeless men. It made them do very dangerous stunts, including breaking glass, things that led to injury, consuming hazardous substances, and some amount of physical violence between each other. Thankfully, there was enough backlash that this was eventually taken off the market and closed down. And I think most people would say, well, that's an obvious human rights violation. You're taking some of the most marginalized men in society, homeless men. Their desperation leads them to do basically whatever. And you're doing human experiments on them, sadistic ones too, and you're selling it as entertainment. And I think most people find that disgusting, are ashamed that ever existed, there was ever a market for that, and are glad it was shut down. This doesn't actually mean that this stuff isn't possibly still happening. Now it has moved probably, I assume, to illegal sites. You can probably still find this. But we would all be disgusted if, as a society, we institutionalize such an industry. Yeah, why can you compare something like that to prostitution? People are like, no, prostitution is something different. Nobody's physically harmed by prostitution. You know, if there's condom use and John stick to what it was agreed, then... Yeah, what's the harm? I mean, not only is it not true that there is consistent condom use because the financial pressure makes many women, even if it's legally mandated, not use the condoms, or there's Johns pulling them off and Johns violate their agreements with women all the time. But let's assume they weren't. I'm talking about what is legally advertised that you can do to women. This includes things like burning skin, cutting skin, making women vomit or vomiting on women, acts with feces, including touching and ingesting. Same with urine. You can legally make a woman drink your urine and that will be called sex work in Germany and anywhere else where prostitution is normalized and porn. Uh, strangulation, of course. I mean, that's so normal now that women outside the sex trade, significant number of them have experienced that against their will or with their superficial consent. I say superficial because Risks or dangers of physical acts don't care if you consent it. I can add to that punching in the face, in the stomach, wherever, to the point of bruising. It doesn't matter if you consent, those acts are still violence. They still objectively harm your body and things like strangulation or internal injuries can kill you. Again, medical risks don't care about consent. And there's something incredibly, incredibly wrong with men who want to do that to women. But yeah, in Germany, men who want to do that and they can't find a girlfriend to groom to do that too, they can go into the sex trade and they can purchase access to women who we call sklavias, which means slave. And people either don't know this or don't care because they believe superficial consent makes all these bodily harms not harms. Yeah, I just want to ask these people, let's say I'm a, a sadistic prick who should be locked up for life and I want to harm a homeless person. If I take a homeless man and I make him drink my urine because it's part of a bum fight series, you're shooting a series of videos and you want to sell them and you laugh at it and it's funny to you and you feel a sense of power. That would be exploitation, yeah? We all agree. That would be horrific. But now 
let's say I'm the same man and instead of a homeless man, although yes, I know men are exploited in prostitution too, there are some male victims, but to represent the average situation of when this would actually happen, he takes a woman. And I have found reports by Johns who have done these things to women. So this is not a hypothetical, it's a real situation. He took a woman who was homeless, he gave her like 15, 20 bucks, and in my opinion, raped her and made her drink his urine. Here, the act of drinking urine is not for his entertainment, but for his sexual arousal. The moment it's about his sexual arousal rather than just entertainment, it's sex work. I forgot from the list of bodily harms that you can do legally. Electrocution is fine. You can electrocute someone. You can electrocute a homeless woman or a uh, esclavia. You can do that. And that'll be called BDSM and sex work. Another term that I found on that website is called slave training and another one called whore training. This includes, you know, both ways. These are men who, who want this done to them, masochistic men to have it done to them by dominatrixes, which, by the way, I think is traumatizing to everyone involved. But there's others who want to do it to women. So this will be like grouped together of brutal acts until you've just completely invisibilized the humanity of the person you're abusing in this way. Anyway, if you're in the sex workers work camp, I want to understand your definition of sex work because if it includes, you know, making women drink urine and eat shit and be nearly murdered by strangulation or having their skin burned and cut and having them electrocuted and tortured, I want you to explain to me why it's okay to do that for the purpose of men's sexual arousal but not mere entertainment. Why? I don't understand. Why are you pro-torture for sexual gratification, but anti-torture for any other purpose? Do you actually think that there are women who are born and they want to drink men's urine? And do you think that even <laughs> if that were true, which I highly, highly doubt, do you think it should be encouraged and normalized? I don't actually think that there's tons and tons of people who think this stuff is great. I mean, some sadistic sickos, sure, some brainwashed masochists, sure. But I think the broad population thinks all this is horrific and wrong. And they just don't realize that the full legalization of so-called sex buying and sex work management includes torture, such as these acts. In short, if you oppose bump fight, look for the overlap between practices in bump fight and the sex trade, and you'll find significant overlap. I think in order to be consistent, you'd have to oppose both. Because for homeless men, we don't say, look, we can't abolish bump fights. We can't abolish this like illegal cage fighting in industry because they'll then all have no money, all right? The existence of poverty does not excuse horrific human rights abuses. We don't normalize torture because afterwards that person gets a hot drink and a meal and 20 bucks. The people who actually believe this stuff, I don't, I don't understand you. Unless your religion is like literally some kind of really, really twisted phallic worship where the male orgasm is what all of society should strive to maximize above any other consideration. There's no way in hell that this stuff, which will traumatize the victims for life, whether it's sexual or not sexual, is some kind of instrument against poverty. I've mentioned this in other videos. I think it's an entrencher of inequality and poverty. Anyone who's participated in this will never see the group of people it was done to as fully human. And their trauma and their physical injuries will all be barriers to exiting that exploitation and to ever having a decent quality of life again. I know that this stuff is really hard to grasp. It is for me too. There is reading the list of these acts and then there is reading the story of a woman who went through it after I recorded this rant today, I went on Twitter and there's a German sex trade survivor who tweets mostly in German, but it's worth pushing the translate button. Her name is 
Kali, like the goddess, underscore I am, so the letters I am, underscore exile. For every day until Christmas, you know, an advent calendar, she's tweeting a report of one memorable meeting with a John. And I just want to read out what she shared today because I know, I feel it too, this desire to shut down and deny and not accept that these things are being legally done to women. But they are. And by denying them, well, we completely abandon these women and facing that it is real is the first step to doing something about it. So I'm just going to read out what she tweeted today, translated to English. Kali said... I was booked as a slave. Usually Johns like to book the same woman over and over and every time they get more brutal. Like always, we got drunk first in an especially booked BDSM studio. Then I changed. He always brought the clothes I should wear. It began with more light beatings. Then he put a dog collar on me and then for a short time, he put me in a cage. She doesn't say, but the John is probably a white German man, and she's a young survivor of war from a South Asian country. So there's a race aspect here on top of the misogyny. She says, he took my clothes off and he put ropes on me. In between, he beat me with the flat side of his hand. I wanted to ask him to not hit me in the face and to not hit so hard, but I could barely talk. My tongue was very heavy. Then I blacked out. I don't remember how I came home. I had terrible muscle pain and in the shower I had a shock. All over my body were dark brown and purple bruises, especially on my breasts. I can't say what he did. And for some time, I couldn't show myself naked to anyone. I told my boss, the madam, I sent her pictures of my skin. She became angry and demanded that John pay for the days that I couldn't work for her. I don't know how it ended, but the next question I got from her was when I'd be ready to come back to work. And she gave me camouflaging tips on how to hide the bruising. There was no comment from her about what happened to me. I had to deal with that by myself. Like I always had to. You're telling me there are labor laws who could prevent this. But also BDSM is fine and ethical. And he paid, so if he pays, she consents, right? Where's your limit? When is it torture and not sex work? You tell me. After recording this, I tweeted similar statements as you find in this video. And then in my timeline, I came upon this organization that is a pro-prostitution organization that tweeted about how prostitution is not inherently dangerous. It's just, you know, the laws and the stigma around that harm women. Nothing about prostitution itself is harmful. And if we all just acknowledged it as work, then, you know, that'd be nothing in particular to worry about. It'd be reasonably safe and dignified, etc. I would read you the original tweet, but they deleted it. I couldn't help myself, so I responded with, Women can be legally beaten, kicked, cut, burned, suffocated, urinated on, made to drink urine, defecated on, made to eat feces, made to pretend they're underage for the sake of pedo fantasies, gang banged while eight months pregnant in the legal German sex trade. That is violence. And what do you think the response was? Can you guess? Their response was twofold. One thing they said, if folks are choosing this type of work, folks, because we want to be gender neutral, because we want to pretend it's not mostly men doing this to women, and consenting to it, then to be frank, it's none of your business how they're feeding themselves and their families. 
If you feel they're not in the right profession for them, I'd ask you to double check your motives. So it's not violence, because we just assume that most of the people enduring this consent. So they obviously disagree with my take that some things are harmful, whether you consent or not. Yeah, you can eat feces, and as long as you were like, I'd like to feed my kids by eating feces, then there's nothing fucked up about that. There's nothing wrong with a man who makes a woman do that. That's what sex work is work ideology does to people's brains, I really. And then the, the second part, she is putting words in my mouth that I didn't say. I didn't say someone's in the wrong profession. Like, I don't acknowledge eating feces as a profession, drinking urine, being electrocuted, being tortured. I don't acknowledge that as a profession. And I'd never say to a woman, you're in the wrong place. I'd say, well, first of all, I don't lecture individual women. Unless a woman comes to me and says, I want to discuss my prostitution involvement with you. Or she was a very, very close friend. And I was concerned because I saw a decline in mental or physical health. Otherwise, I'd never lecture an individual woman. I do know women who follow me who've then come to different conclusions about what their sex treat involvement meant. But that's a completely different thing because they're following me on their own volition. But anyway, you know, if, if you are feeling traumatized by having to drink men's urine, then you're not in the right profession. Like, do you, do you see how these people who say that stigma kills actually are perpetuating it by suggesting that women who are distressed or harmed or traumatized were in the wrong profession? And that's the only explanation. Because there's nothing wrong with drinking urine. There's nothing wrong with the men. And it doesn't harm the women unless they don't have the right constitution. But, you know, some women, they got it. They either gained it or were born that way. And the response to this tweet that they haven't deleted yet are pretty good. So this one person saying, consent is not a justification for the practices themselves. A practice isn't good or right because someone agrees to it. That's exactly what I was trying to say. And someone else said, if a woman chose to be the housewife of a violent husband and even justifying consent to his violence, would that be valid? Is it none of our business as feminists? That's what I also say often. Prostitution is like an abusive relationship. I'm not saying for every single woman. I don't know every single woman's story, but for many, many, many women and many survivors have told us at the time they would have defended the industry and everything connected with it tooth and nail because it felt like their lifeboat even though like the lifeboat was slowly sinking. Like if a husband made his wife drink urine, could I call that domestic violence? Or are they just a kinky couple? And yeah, men can do these to their wives and girlfriends and they'll be considered BDSM. And every woman is assumed to be consenting until she can prove otherwise. That's why campaigns such as we can't consent to this in the UK for women killed through strangulation, supposedly consensual erotic strangulation, why it's so important to say, no, actually, things that can kill us, they're not consensual. And actually, these are indicators of domestic violence, intimate partner violence, male violence. And this is not about the state coming into everybody's bedroom and taking away their gags and chains. It's about saying that when a victim comes forward, we take things such as be it the pimp or the john or the boyfriend making her drink urine as a sign of sadism, as an act of bodily harm. It's about how we address that situation when she asks for help. And it's also how we talk as a society about what we normalize and that we continue to critically analyze who does it to whom and why. Why is drinking urine a sexual act? Explain it to me. If two people do whatever act with each other and they don't want to tell no one and they have fun and no one ends up severely injured or ill, I don't care. But I don't want a presumption of innocence if a victim does come forward. And I don't want it taught to teenage girls that they should submit to whatever. And it's all just kink and it's all just fine. This is how this does affects everyone but it's especially egregious in the sex trade because you're saying you know the roof over your head the food on the table for your family this is what it's acceptable for you to endure 
Eating feces is not a job. Drinking urine is not a job. Being electrocuted is not a job. Being beaten is not a job. In my opinion, being penetrated is not a job. And here's the amazing other thing they said. So the, the pro prostitution organization said, would you please ensure to place a trigger warning for folks who've been sexually assaulted and following this page? I understand you need to express your opinion, but we're not okay with folks overcoming trauma being triggered by folks here. Thank you. So again, the worst thing is not that this is being done to women, it's that I'm talking about it and someone might stumble upon it. And the response to this by another Twitter account is, so you promote an industry so horrendous that you can't neutrally list the services legally available without invoking sexual violence? Interesting. What other industries function this way? If I describe the gross parts of commercial fishing, will that trigger rape victims? Honestly, that's the reply I expected. I expected that consent is some kind of holy grail and can do anything. I think, short of murdering someone, I don't know, is, is there ethical cannibalism if women were cutting pieces of flesh out of their skin and Johns were eating it? Or Johns were cutting skin out of someone and making women eat it? Like, where's, where's the line? Murder? Okay, because this video wasn't pressing enough, the news that I saw about Canada making it easier for people to be killed for mental health reasons as well as physical and chronic pain is so unbelievably dystopian because I guess when I say like people are still against killing and you can't consent to being killed, yeah you can. Not in the sex trade, but in the in the assisted suicide industry. Which what I'm reading about it is I can't possibly support this. And also this connects to the sex trade. We have a huge lack of funds to support women and they are disproportionately affected by mental and physical health problems, severe problems, chronic suicidality, certainly a thing that many, many, many go through. Studies confirm this. I can totally imagine, even now, but especially if Canada should flip from the Nordic model that they refuse to implement to you know, the free-for-all model that's currently being advocated under their banner of decrim, that, you know, instead of exit, if you come out of sex state distress, first of all, you were in the wrong profession. Like, what's wrong with you? Why don't you like being gangbanged by men? You got the wrong constitution. Now you're traumatized? Well, we're not going to give you any service, but we'll murder you. You can, And you can consent to that. So no, actually, there's no bottom to what, I don't know, what's the right term? Patriarchal, neoliberal, I don't know, whatever the parts of society that do these things permit, whatever that is. I don't know who said this, but a bunch of feminists have said, like, patriarchies are a death cult. I see what they mean.